Ezekiel 46. Thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that faces east shall be shut on the six working days, but on the Sabbath day it shall be opened, and on the day of the new moon it shall be opened. The prince shall enter by the vestibule of the gate from outside, and shall take his stand by the post of the gate. The priest shall offer his burnt offering and his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then he shall go out, but the gate shall not be shut until evening. The people of the land shall bow down at the entrance of that gate before the Lord on the Sabbath and on the new moons. The burnt offerings that the prince offers to the Lord on the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. And the grain offering with the ram uh, shall be an ephah, and the grain offering with the lambs uh, shall be as much as he is able, together with hin of oil, to each ephah. On the day of the new moon, he shall offer a bull from the herd without blemish, and six rams, six lambs, and a ram which shall be without blemish. As a grain offering, he shall provide an ephah with the bull, and an ephah with the ram, and the, and the lambs as much as he is able, together with a hint of oil to each ephah. When the prince enters, he shall enter by the vegetable of the gate, and he shall go out by the same way. When the, prince, when the people of the land come before the Lord at the appointed feast, he who enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by the south gate. He who enters by the south gate shall go out by the north gate. No one shall enter by the, by the way of the gate which, by which he entered, but shall go out the straight ahead. When they enter, the prince shall enter with them, and when they go out, he shall go out. At the feasts and the appointed festivals, the grain offering with a young bull shall be an ephah, and with a ram and an ephah, uh, and with the lambs as much as, he, as one is able to give, together with a hint of oil to an ephah. When the prince provides a free will offering, either a burnt offering or peace offerings as a free will offering to the Lord, the gate facing east shall be opened for him, and he shall offer his burnt offering for him, or his peace offering as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go out, and after he has gone out, the gate shall be shut. He shall provide a lamb a year old without blemish for a burnt offering to the Lord daily. Morning by morning you shall provide it, and you shall provide a grain offering with it morning by morning. On one sixth of an ephah and one third of a hin of oil to moisten the flour as a grain offering to the Lord. This is a perpetual statute. Thus the lamb and the meal offering and the oil shall be provided morning by morning for a regular burnt offering. Thus says the Lord God, if the prince makes a gift of to any of his sons as his inheritance, it shall belong to his sons. It is their property by inheritance. But if he makes a gift out of his inheritance to one of his servants, it shall be his to the year of liberty. When it, then it shall revert to the prince. Surely it is his inheritance. It shall belong to his sons. The prince shall not take any of the inheritance for the people of the people, thrusting them out of their property. He shall give his sons their inheritance out of his own property, so that none of my people shall be scattered from his property. Then he brought me through the entrance, which was at the side of the gate, to the north row of the holy chambers for the priests. And behold, a place was there at the extreme western end of them. And he said to me, This is the place where the priest shall boil the guilt offering and the sin offering, and where they shall bake the grain offering in order not to bring them out into the outer court, and so transmit holiness to the people. Then he brought me out to the outer court and led me around to the four corners of the court. And, be and behold, in each corner of the court there was Another court, in the four corners of the court were small courts, 40 cubits long and 30 broad. The four were of the same size. On the inside, around each of the four courts was a row of masonry, with herds made at the bottom of the rows all around. Then he said to me, These are the kitchens where those who minister at the temple shall boil the sacrifices of the people. This is the word of God. 
For six days a week, the gates of the temples are closed. But on the Sabbath day, God has commanded the gates to be wide open. If God was only accessible one day out of the week, and if you're and if you lived your life as if your life depended on God alone, communicating with God, worshiping God, which it does, would you ever forget about that one day? Would you ever forego that one day to spend it doing something else? The Sabbath is not a Sunday. The Sabbath is not just a regular day of the week that we have set apart to go to church, to be with our community. Actually, from the beginning of time, at the beginning of creation, the Sabbath day was set apart by God himself, a day for the Lord, a day of rest, a day to worship God, to honor and glorify him. That is the purpose of the seventh day. You see, when God created the universe, he saw that all things were good and that all things were good and made to worship him. And he saw that all things must worship him to remain good. So he set apart a day of rest, a day of worship. And throughout scripture, we can see how important this day of rest was and still is. The details outlined for us in our passage is evidence. You know, there aren't steps one to 70 whatever about how we should go to work during the six days of the week, how we should dress during the week, how we should clean ourselves during the week, what we should eat during the week, no. The Bible doesn't care about that. But the focus is on Sabbath. About Sabbath, about worship, and about sacrifices, God lays down the law and God lays down to every last detail how we should worship Him, how we should be clean, how we should uh, set apart the Sabbath day for Him and Him, him alone. He outlines right? He, not only does he list the ingredients that need, uh, that we need to, to offer up a pleasing sacrifice, he, he outlines how much of it we need. But not only that, he outlines the quality of the ingredients that we must have without blemish and how old it should be. But not only that, but he also goes into, uh, how uh, the temple will have built-in kitchens and how, uh, where and how to prepare these sacrifices as well. The evidence is overwhelming that the Sabbath day is not just a Sunday to God. It is a holy day set apart at the beginning of time and it is good for us. On this Sabbath day, we must worship God. We must honor and glorify God. Take Sabbath as your life depends on it. Rest and worship God as your life depends on it. Because it does. It really does. Our life, our lives depend on our worship on our of our creator let's pray <clears throat>